Now let's see biconditional. So biconditional statements are represented by this symbol. And um, if you write something like this, if P is a statement, Q is a statement, if you say so the two table is going to be so it is going to be true either if both of them are true or both of them are false otherwise it is going to be false so why is it called biconditional is it is actually combination of conditional statement from two sides so it means that it is combination of P implies Q and Q implies P, right? So how can you know it? If you if you are talking about P implies Q, this is what you know, right? So true, false, uh, sorry, P implies Q is this P double implies Q, right? So true, true. This is P implies Q. If P and Q are like this, and what about Q and uh, Q implies P? it is true true false true and now if you take and of these two then we are going to get true false false true right so that is why uh, this is biconditional because it is a combination of two conditions and in english uh, not in english if you are trying to put them in statements we are going to use the word if and only if if and only if or sometimes it is used like this iff or sometimes it is used as it is necessary and sufficient condition right so I'll take an example and explain you what we really mean by this. Let us say we have two statements P and Q. P is I got the tickets and don't worry about the tense here. Here I'm using past tense and when I convert it to the uh, biconditional or conditional statements, I'll try to change the tense. But the meaning of the statement the actual meaning it refers is going to be same right i got the ticket i will watch the movie now if you want to write like this p by conditional q so how are you going to write it is either you can use if and only if or if or it is necessary and sufficient that so one well, I'm using this if and only if type. So I will go to the movie if and only if I get the tickets. Right? So it actually makes sense, at least in this one, but in, in, in English language, if you try to express the same meaning, if you want to express the same meaning like this in English language, we generally use if. If I get the tickets, I'll go to movie in English, right? So if you say like that, it means that if you don't get the tickets, you are not going to see the movie. And if you want to express the same meaning in logic, then you are supposed to use this biconditional, got it? So in biconditional we are going to use like this and one other way of writing it is P double implies Q and uh, Q double implies P both are equivalent. So P double implies Q and Q double implies P both are equivalent. So which means even this statement same statement can be written as I'll get the tickets if and only if I go to the movie. Even though it doesn't make sense in English it is perfectly fine in this logic. Okay. Uh, so what, what questions you can expect from this is uh, 
whenever uh, they want to talk about the equivalences they might give you these questions and they might confuse you so they might say that these two are equivalent prove that these two are i mean which of the following are equivalent in the question they might give you this and in the options one of the options may be this right so in that case you are supposed to solve it now if you observe it we have seen many connectives and if you observe this compound statement i try to put the brackets and say that this one is this one has to be evaluated first this implication has to be evaluated first and then this implication has to be evaluated first and then only uh, this uh, connective has to be applied that conjunction now if we don't have these brackets the meaning of this statement will change therefore we are supposed to know even what will be the precedence of the operators that we have seen till now see whatever we have seen all the connectors or these connectives they are also operators and whenever we talk about operators we are supposed to know the precedence right so what is the precedence of this highest precedence is going to be negation this is the first highest and the next highest precedence has to be given to conjunction and the next highest precedence has to be given to disjunction and the next highest precedence has to be given to implication and the next highest one has to be given to double implication got it so this is the precedence so what does it mean in case if you don't have any parenthesis then you are supposed to follow this order and go with it see if something is given like this negation p and q or i something like this how to evaluate it no parenthesis are given now according to the rules of the precedence this one has to be evaluated first and then this one has to be evaluated and finally this one has to be evaluated got it so that is where this precedence rules are going to be useful and one way they might ask you question is what about the equivalences they might combine all these operators and then they will ask you about the equivalences it is very simple to answer see something they might ask you is which of the following is they will they will write like this p implies q implies r then which of these are equivalent then how to solve such questions is go go step by step right and form the table you form the table and then you put this one there and then you put all the options and you see which option is actually having the same truth value as the given one only problem in such question is you will definitely get the answer but it might take some time in case if three variables are involved you are going to have eight rows correct in case if four variables are involved you are going to have 16 in that case what you do is you give uh, you you evaluate it for few values don't go for all the 16 values and if you are able to distinguish all the uh, options given by looking at some part of uh, you know by looking at few rows here so what i mean to say is let us say this is the statement right in this case since you have two variables you are going to have four rows and it is simple and you are doing it what if it is three variables then you are supposed to have eight rows and you are supposed to evaluate it what if you have four variables you are supposed to have 16 rows then what is that i am trying to say is don't go with 16 rows or 8 rows try to go with 4 rows and see if you can eliminate some of the options right so for example the, you just substitute true true here true true here true true here and true true here now you got 4 rows completely and now you see what is given in the question and what is given in the options and you can see if they are giving the same values most of the cases you will be able to eliminate some of the options like that okay so since it is very trivial i'm not actually solving such questions you do them as uh, exercise got it okay Hi. if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of one lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5% and IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%, but all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 
and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting it, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join Game of Visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 Okay, thank you.